Hi, I'm Emily and I am here with Maya Murphy's attorney, H. Daniel Murphy. Attorney Murphy practices at Maya Murphy's law offices in New York and Connecticut. My question for attorney Murphy today is, what happens if after a divorce with children, one party has to relocate for work? So at the time of a divorce judgment, a court has to enter orders finding that a parenting plan, whatever that parenting plan is, is in the best interest of the children at that time. And the fact of the matter is the times change and circumstances change. And especially if you're dealing with young children at the time of the divorce, uh, from, from that time until the children are of the age of majority, the likelihood is that something will happen um, with respect to the parents, maybe changing jobs, maybe changing locations, maybe getting remarried, something like that, where the parenting plan may be implicated and ha may have to change. In the case where one party um, has a job offer, let's say across the country, or has to relocate for work, Connecticut statutes and case law set forth a very specific procedure and a burden of proof and a process for the parties to follow. So an application has to be filed with the court to seek permission to relocate um, with, with the children. And the first question that a court would consider is whether or not the proposed move would have a substantial impact on the parenting plan that currently exists. So what I mean by that is if you're talking about just a move across town, or one parent wants to move around the corner, or maybe one parent wants to move just a very short distance from one town to another, and the other parent maybe lives 30 miles away. Well, in both of those situations, the, the underlying parenting plan may not be substantially impacted by that type of relocation. But it would be affected significantly if one party says, well, I, I want to go from here in Connecticut to California, for example. Um, if either one party or the other party wants to go, obviously the parenting plan as it existed when they were in the same town or the same county or the same state would be affected significantly. So that's the first question. And then the relocating parent or the proposed relocating parent has to prove to a court that he or she has a legitimate purpose for the move and that the move is reasonable in light of that purpose. It's connected to it in a reasonable fashion. And that person is also, that parent is also tasked with the responsibility to prove to the court that the relocation would be in the best interest of the child or children they're seeking to move. It used to be the case that the, the non-relocating party, the one wishing to stay behind, here would have to prove that the move was not in the best interest of the child. That changed well more, more than a decade ago now. And so now it's the burden, the legal burden is solely on the parent who's proposing the move at that time. What kind of things does a court consider in deciding whether a parent is permitted to relocate or not? So in the, in the mechanism that I just described, there's a number of things that the court will look to uh, in trying to make a decision, a very difficult decision for a court to make as to whether one party is permitted to pick up with children and go to a different location, um, either within the country or outside of the country. And the court's going to look at the reasons, the underlying reasons for either seeking the relocation and also look at the reasons for the non-relocating party to oppose that relocation and it's going to weigh those reasons. Uh, the court is also going to look at the quality of the relationships that ex currently exist between both the relocating party and the children and the non-relocating party and the children. Uh, the court is also going to look at the impact of the relocation or the, the proposed impact of the relocation on the quantity and the quality of future contact with the non-relocating party. So when, when or if a party is permitted to move far away, um, how will that and to what degree will that impact the relationship that, they, that the non-relocating party has with the children. And the court will also look at um, the proposed move uh, and the circumstances around it and, and try to weigh the degree to which the relocating parents and child's life would be enhanced by this move. Um, and that could be in a number of ways. That could be economically, that could be emotionally, um, that could be educationally. And so the court will weigh all of those things. And also, and, and certainly not least, the court is going to look at the, the feasibility of preserving the relationship between the children and the non-relocating parent and, and by alternate means. Um, so, you know, in this day and age, people will look to, they'll look to Skype and they'll look to video calls and, and they'll, they'll wonder or they'll, they'll, they'll theorize that 
uh, maybe the relationship will not be as negatively impacted as it otherwise would be without that technology. But that's something for a court to consider, um, as well as alternative visitation plans, uh, summer plans, enhanced time with the kids um, when they're not in school, things like that. So all those factors go into the pot, so to say, and, and, and the things that are considered by the court in deciding whether or not it's fair and appropriate and in the best interest of the children to allow a party to relocate with minor children. 